despite our limitations and fallibilities. We humans are capable of greatness. The show is so impressive and it goes so many different places. And especially this season, it sort of like ties the past to the future. What was the writing and research process like for the show? The idea was we wanted to create a life-changing experience. And where, you know, here we are facing tremendously daunting challenges in terms of where we are as a civilization and the danger to, to, to our children and grandchildren. And we didn't want to just, you know, grab you by the lapels and scream, we're all going to die, <laughs> you know? We wanted to create a vision of the future that was worth working for, not the dystopian kind of future that we're so used to seeing. But also we wanted to demonstrate by telling the stories of these heroic searchers who've added to our understanding of nature. We wanted to tell the stories so that you would come out owning them, owning those ideas, being more powerful and perhaps more persuaded that it matters what's true and that we can, we can do this, we can get to that future of the 2039 New York World's Fair or of the time when our species is arrayed throughout the galaxy on different, on those possible worlds. We wanted to tell those stories so that people would come out inspired, inspired, awakened, and ready to act in defense of the future. We are not investing in the future, we're investing in the energy supplies of the past. We're looking backward and we have to shift gears because what's called for is for all of us to start thinking in the time scales that the scientists are giving us, not to the next election, not to the next balance sheet, but to the longest possible future. And so for me, this is a public undertaking, the widest possible undertaking. You know, when I was a kid and we went to the moon, no matter how much I disagreed with the government about other things than I did, I felt a sense of pride that we were engaged in a mythic undertaking. And I think we're missing that. And I don't think this should be, it seems to me like a, we're going back to the 19th century to depend on the kindness of billionaires to get us to the stars. Don't, I don't, I think we all have to be part of that great undertaking. How far will our nomadic species have wandered by the end of the next century and the next millennium? The show is so heavily graphically based. How did you guys work to make sure that those are accurate representations? This is a documentary show that can't take cameras into outer space back in time in the future or to the microscopic scale. There, so there are all these places we have to go that we ha and we got to figure out how we're going to do it and we have a lot of visual mediums at our disposal uh, the visual effects animation and and other things to to do all of those things in terms of accuracy um, it's the research and it's our scientific advisors uh, Andre Bor Madison you said how many other a dozen other very distinguished scientists uh, that we've run our, our ideas by and asked for criticism uh, in order to winnow out, we all make mistakes, just to winnow out, you know, the, the errors of scientific fact, which we certainly don't want in Cosmos. We want to keep to the facts. We have a brilliant VFX supervisor, Jeff Oaken, and throughout, the, it was important to get the physics right because that's the VFX you believe because you know how things fall and move. We work together every day, Yeah. all day long. Like we were, it was a- Sometimes seven days a week. Yeah, it was, and thousands of visual effect shots going through dozens of iterations a piece. Sometimes it felt like that's all we were doing, right. uh, but it was worth it. Yeah, each shot could have 50, 60 iterations, but it wasn't final until we were both completely happy. Um, last question is, um, would you guys go to space? I have to imagine the answer is yes. And under what circumstances? Like, do you want to go, you know, 
does your whole family have to go with you yes. or do you want to go and come back and you know in a week or you want yeah. to be on earth still or yeah I, you know i want to go in my imagination but i'm very happy on this planet i am you know for me especially because i am a mother and a grandmother i feel just like i'll just stay right here thank you very much but um and also i'm not crazy about very confined or relatively confined spaces so I, I think I'm going to stay here. But Brandon, what would what about you? I've got <coughs> pa panic issues, so I think <coughs> you know I would go give it the chance. Who would? I mean, if we're a short trip, I, I might mean, not. I might. Not. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the no safety record. You. I don't know. If it was like the multi generational intergalactic uh, superliner that we depict in the show, mm -hmm. like I could. All right, I'll get on that. Because yeah. I know that there's a sauna, you know, <laughs> there's like a lot of stuff uh, to do, but not in the immediate future. Yeah. Who will we become in the far future?